Hey guys, alright, so in this video we're going to make our own canvas panel board um, with a box frame. Basically it just looks like a normal canvas and it's real easy to make. I'm going to show you a lot of the things that I use to make it, some of the things you may want to swap out or whatever you want to use, but drywall strapping for the frame. This is one and a half inches wide. It is, you can use whatever wood you want to use, that's up to you, that's what I use. You're going to need something to cut it with, a saw. Um, if you don't have an electrical saw or want to spend money on one, you can get a little miter box or just a basic saw. A miter box would be a, a pretty good investment. They run like 30, 40 bucks and you can cut these different angles so it'll come in use later on for other things. Um, uh, something else you're going to use is a square. You can just use a ruler or something it's very straight. It's just great for budding, lining, making your lines nice and straight for cutting, things like that. Uh, you don't have to use a square if you don't want to use a square. I just have it and I like it. A pencil or a pen or something, obviously, to make your lines. A ruler, a tape measure, something, because you need to measure everything. Scissors to cut our fabric with. All right, this is our fabric scissors. They work better than most scissors. Uh, this is a staple gun. Definitely, I would use a staple gun, some extra staples. Uh, you can use nails if you want, but like I said, I prefer the staple gun. It's quick, it's easy, it does the job. and some clamps. Clamps are great for because we're going to be doing some gluing on this one and that just helps hold thing in place. A sandpaper. You just need a little sheet just for sanding in between. Uh, really high grid. I use like 220. A paintbrush. A one to two inch paintbrush. Okay, nothing too, nothing too wide. Um, you, you'll see later why. We have, uh, we do need our paint, something to open it with. These are free at the store. You can get one of those or use a screwdriver. It's up to you a paint stick something for stirring now the paint we use this is going to be a primer and sealer it is drywall um, I just got this because it was really cheap and I wanted to try it it is 100% acrylic like the other stuff I use this um, versus the other stuff I use actually feels more like an actual canvas when it dries versus the other stuff I use is um, feels more like poster board, nice smooth glossy feel. It is a hundred percent acrylic enamel interior exterior high gloss. Um, same brand, you can use whatever brand you want, but this one is high gloss enamel enamel interior exterior, uh, hundred percent acrylic, and it goes on makes a nice smooth shiny surface that you would just like your poster board. But for this, we're gonna use this drywall one. All right, now this here is just your typical bed sheet. Go to the store, get a cheap bed sheet, make sure it's 100% cotton or a cotton blend. Um, you don't need that thick linen stuff that everybody wants to use. Um, that's a pretty pricey per yard and stuff. This is very cheap. Put it on it and make sure it's, like I said, a cotton or a cotton blend. The fabric uh, nylon or, or whatnot, polyester, will stretch over time and you don't want that. This stuff will work once that paint's on it and it hardens. It's gonna feel just like your typical canvas. Okay, so definitely this this is the highlight. This is the what makes this whole process, you know, a cheaper thing to do something, you know, for a, star, a starving artist, you know. So I'll put some of this stuff up here. Uh, these boards are great, guys. Um, you're gonna need glue for this one because we're doing a canvas board. Uh, if we're we're doing a regular canvas, I wouldn't use the glue, whatnot, and never I never glue the uh, strappings to each other because over time they do bend and warp because of uh, you know retraction and when you know when they 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 take on moisture and they do tend to warp over time. So uh, you do need to have a little bit of give, but for this because it's panel board, it's not really going to go anywhere. Okay, it's not going to it shouldn't. I've never had them bend on a canvas board. So anyways, this nice uh, smooth side on one side, the other side is a gritty board side, uh, is more gritty. I would do the smooth side up. These are great for people who like spray painting like I do. Um, great for acrylic paintings and everything. You can make them whatever sizes you want to make them. Um, I like the hard canvas board make those over like this here this is one of my first ones I've made and it's not a canvas board it's just basic canvas and it's just it's easier to stretch over this stuff the material over this than it is to stretch it over this here um, you, you can kind of understand why you know you got something holding it down now once we cut our board you're gonna want to definitely make sure and when you go to cut it measure it a hundred times before you cut it 
okay once you cut it you know check it check, line it up make sure everything's good before we start um, I like to measure from one corner to the other and then measure the adjacent corners um, the opposite way that way from there you know to the other corner over here and make sure they're the same exact size then you know you're pretty much on the right road and then I like to take the uh, tape measure or your ruler and measure it here and down the middle and on the other end and everything just make sure everything's real good because you know you can you can measure a hundred thousand times but you're only gonna cut once and once you cut it you can't really put it back you know so make sure it's right and before we start painting and get everything glued on there you want to make sure it's right so measure your board once you have it out and everything measure your wood cut where you need to cut it I like to measure one long side one short side and then just cut them you don't want them to overlap so what are you gonna do about it right so what we do is we measure this one long side okay you can measure this one short side here and you can go through all this crazy math crap if you want to go through it I personally just what I do is I like to measure this long one up here on the top and then measure it measure the wood uh, across it you know uh, depth wise I know how all the way end to end of my board and then measure this that is one and a half inches I know I have two of them that's gonna be one and a half inches times two equals three inches so this whole entire length take off three inches and that's gonna be up here and it'll fit my ends on there perfectly if you kinda understand what I'm saying there I mean kinda hard for me to <laughs> explain that one out I don't I don't know why that should have been easier to explain but I'm sure you guys understand what I'm saying very simple now this board here I forgot to mention is Masonite I believe it's called Masonite I know the stickers on it are usually called they call it yucca board it's fibery on one side smooth on the other alright guys so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our painting process and putting it together alright so I put my glue on the board and then just now this glue here, you know this is real thick gel glue, it's hard to get out of that thing. I would use wood glue uh, normally, but so we got it cut, we put our ends down, put them against it, butt them up flush, put our clamp on it, hold it in place because they will tend to want to move or, or slide out of place as you button them up. It's just, I don't know, they just, what they do, okay? so. Definitely glue them on, clamps. Um, if you don't have clamps, you know, set them on a flat surface, set a couple bricks on top of it, something. I've done that before, before I bought all these clamps. These clamps were pretty cheap at the store. You know, they run like $3 for this one clamp. And so not too bad. Just over time, I've accumulated more of them. Now that it's all glued and dried up, we're going to put some staples in the corners. I already did the other two corners. So I'm going to show you here. And I just like to, it's just to hold them together. And this is just something I do because I'm used to doing it with the non-canvas board ones. You probably don't have to do it with this board on here. Um, once you pull the material over, it'll be nice and tight and it won't go anywhere anyways. Um, hammer down any staples that may be sticking up. And obviously, nails if you're nailing. You don't want anything sticking up. I put um, three to four staples in each edge. Just that keeps it together. Now, typically, you know, with the regular canvas without this board on it these staples alone will just allow that little bit of give for the expansion and retraction so now we got this all set up and ready where you can go ahead and move on to the next step here alright so alright we're ready to move on here to our material so now I have everything pre-measured pre-cut you know for this video uh, when you go to cut it you know you want to set your board down on it and then measure you know all the way around it and leave about three inches around the edge I leave actually about like six or so inches as you can see here this is how much I leave on it because I'm always I'm always over cutting and I'm just messing it up so I leave a little extra so this is see that's how much I use <laughs> leave extra okay so a lot extra <laughs> you leave uh, whatever you feel like leaving I mean if it's your first time doing this I would definitely leave uh, a good amount just play it safe you know again you can measure a whole bunch 
you can only cut once. Once you cut it off, you, you can't really put it back. So we will put it over here on the edge. Now this first edge is, you don't need that to pull everything nice and tight. I actually just like to roll the edge a little bit on the first one. And after you watch me fight with this for a little bit here, because the starting process is annoying and despite how many of these I made, I still I still take forever to make these. But see how I folded the edge over? I like to fold that over because I think it gives it a nice clean look and I would suggest doing that on your canvas board as well. Because just leaving it the way it is, you know, where it's been cut, even if you made a nice cut line, you still get those little strings that pull out and everything and they will do that. So just roll it over, keep it kind of straight, you know, staple them in. I like to staple every inch, inch and a half. Um, you can do a little more than that, two inches if you want. Uh, because it's canvas board, you can you can stretch that area out and do like every three inches if you want. If you weren't doing a board and you're doing a regular canvas, I would keep it closer together. Because uh, as you stretch it, you, you know, the closer you have them together, less wrinkles you'll have in the end. So do one whole side and then do a corner here. The corners, here I am cutting some more off. Do a do the corner. I like to sit down and get the corner done. I typically take about five to six minutes per corner. Um, when you first start, uh, my first corner I ever did on my first canvas actually took me about a half an hour to figure out. They're really annoying. But once you get the one corner done, switch over, pull it, cut off your excess over there that you're going to have if you have any, or you can wait and do that later if you want. But do the other corner, and then once you get the corner done, nice and tight, just pull it tight, and then keep checking for wrinkles if you want. You know, that's a good idea because you can see which way you need to pull it if there's too many wrinkles going one direction. And then just uh, cut off what you don't need. You want to you want to fold it over, but you don't want too much laying underneath it. It'll have it puffed up and sit up too high, and it'll, it'll look more like you know uh, a diaper, you know, <laughs> like a nappy or something. But anyway, so get it, get it folded over. Get a staple then hammer down any staples that stick up and just take your time doing it and switch back do the other side my rule of thumb for me doing it you can figure it out as you go which what process you like best but whatever side i start on and i always try to start on one the longest side i always leave the opposite the adjacent side uh, of it the opposite side of it for last okay because for pulling and stretching you'll see it, it it pulls it stretches it all out and gets that, all the wrinkles out now here here I am doing a corner alright these things are a pain in the butt some people can make have the corner done real quick and they're real good at it and everything and for me it's just getting it just right and pulling it tight and having it right where I want it and then you know if it's not where I want it I'm gonna start over again and do it again so it takes me like I said five six minutes per corner to get it done uh, typically, you know, some corners go quicker, some take a little longer. But you want to fold it in on itself because if you just pull it over, you're going to notice that there's be like this little point that sticks out the corner, uh, like a little little nipple or so. Um, and you you don't want that point there, so you got to tuck it under, pull it tight, hold it down, and staple gun. Now, guys, see this is why I'm saying the staple gun is a lot easier to do because can you imagine holding this down, trying to hold a nail and hammer it at the same time? You know, hold it tight, hold the nail, nail it at the same time. It, I, that I use nails on the f like one of the first ones I did, and I'm telling you, staple gun, guys, staple gun. If you want to use nails to keep the frame together, that's up to you. But putting the canvas on, definitely a staple gun, guys. All right, so here we need to pull as tight as we can, and I'm suggesting every inch and a half, or you know, every inch, inch and a half. You move down, do that part, pull it tight, check it. Put a uh, staple it down, move down an inch and a half, and do it again. Do that the whole length of this thing, and keep checking it. And I promise you, when you're done, it's gonna be there's gonna be no wrinkles. If you do see wrinkles on one of the back on say the left side of me there, if there was a wrinkle underneath it, looking at it, you may have to pull out every staple down to that end to pull that tight on that side. All right, guys. So here we are. This is a all nice and finished, pulled. It is a little dirty because my table is dirty, but you know we can wipe that off later with a towel before we paint it and whatnot. Plus, when you paint it, it's going to cover it up. Here it is. You know, there's the back. You see how I got it all rolled over on itself? Looks real nice. And when it gets painted, it'll look uh, even nicer. So, 
here it is nice and smooth it uh, has no wrinkles no lumps no bumps okay that's exactly what we're looking for so and we're gonna end up painting the top of this and we're gonna paint the sides of it as well and I like to paint anywhere that the material is touching so the underside as well um, you don't have to paint that underside if you don't want I definitely suggest painting at least the side edge trim there but we're gonna do the underside so anywhere the material touches alright guys let's get started shake up our paint uh, you can just stir it up if you want I like to shake it up and stir up get some of the bubbles back out like it really matters but the first layer here we're gonna put on is actually a very thin layer it may look like a lot of paint guys but it is a very thin layer and I don't do the bottom right now I save that for last um, it might be even best maybe to do that first and then let that dry and then turn it over because if we did the top of this here and the sides and then we turned it over before it was dry and did the bottom you know everything's gonna stick to it it's gonna stick to the table you're gonna make a mess so you don't want to do that common sense right so just paint along paint along and the reason uh, I said you want a thin brush like a one inch or a one and a half inch brush or so around in there it's because when we do the sides and the edges you know you you want to turn it sideways and brush the sides and the edges so that way you don't have a lot of paint over spill off the brush you know it'll, it'll just kinda leak over the edges uh, like a lava flow you know so and then you gotta clean all that up with the brush again it just makes a little more work so I would, I would just keep a thin brush put it on real thin pick anything off that you see here any you know that's me picking uh, hairs off from the brush itself alright guys so we have a piece of sandpaper okay it's 220 grit high grit you can use something higher if you want and we want to go over it real lightly I do a light after and you want to make sure this is very dry you know wipe everything off of it that you got off you know any dust or anything but go over it real lightly and this is just to smooth it out because uh, as a spray paint artist you kind of want a really smooth surface typically so sand over it real lightly and then dust all the dust off with a dry towel and uh, the, do the second coat the second coat is a lot thicker guys okay and you know you don't want it super thick just flowing over the edges but you want to put it on a lot thicker you can do another thin coat if you want and then do a third thin coat and leave it at that I just do one thin coat and then uh, double the thickness of the first coat for my second layer make sure you pick anything off of it make sure you get your sides make sure you pick anything off of it because you know sometimes the hairs come out of the brushes especially if you get a cheaper brush like I tend to use and you're gonna pick those hairs uh, from the brush out of it because uh, you don't want those stuck there once it dries they're there and then you know it just they're like speed bumps while you're painting and stuff it's just annoying alright guys so now we're gonna do another layer of sanding you know this is that 220 grit piece of sandpaper again just a quick real light sanding we're getting it really smooth and then we're gonna take our dry towel and we're gonna dust it off real good now we're gonna turn it over find any staples or any of your nails or whatever you use to you know, anything that's sticking up slightly just make sure you give them a little tap and bang them down in there and then we're going to paint the the underside of this here along the edge I'm not gonna paint the inside middle you can do that if you want but I'm not I don't I don't feel like doing that I don't it doesn't really matter to me I mean it looks fine but make sure that when we're painting this we do this at a side stroke side stroke like that turn the brush sideways and do a side stroke and then we want to paint the edge of it a little bit there of any wood that's sticking over I try not to paint the around the lip but here make sure we get the corners nice and saturated get it down in there you know this when it dries it's gonna dry real hard so count as glue you know so look at there's that piece of wood that was showing right there where the material wasn't quite covering it all the way to the edge give it you know any of that that's showing is what I mean by painting the edge you want to paint that just to kind of hide it and make it blend in like it's part of the material it just shares up any of the few little flaws you have in the making process so get that really saturated but you know you don't want it globby and then it'll dry but here's that wood I'm talking about see there's the edge and 
there's the wood you can't really t quite tell the difference between the two there's the edge there's the wood we paint that it's actually wood right there kind of looks like the material when we're done right all right guys hey well thanks for watching this video just want to go over a few things real quick I mean this is the finished product the the paint that we used is a drywall primer paint it is a uh, drywall primer sealer paint you use on drywall it leaves a gesso feel you do not have to use gesso um, a quick uh, reminder of what gesso is for gesso is was um, it was originally um, used to to coat the canvas to protect the canvas material from the corrosive acids of oil paints and that I know of, I mean, that I know of. this is just from my research if I'm a little wrong you know hey you know don't burn me um, but it should be it was just a, and it makes sense you know to protect the fibers of the canvas from the corrosive uh, acids of oils over time as they break down it will break down the canvas and to protect the canvas I mean to protect the oils from in the any impurities in the canvas itself that may cause uh, the uh, splitting, cracking, peeling, and whatnot of the oil paints. This drywall uh, primer is 100% acrylic. It leaves a nice, hard um, coating, everything the same as the gesso, except it's a sl slightly smoother, just a little bit. And really, that's just because we sanded it. If you didn't sand it, it is the exact same as the as the gesso so I know that it works for acrylics I don't oil paint so I don't know if it works for oils and that'll stay on it I don't see why it wouldn't um, especially if you didn't maybe you didn't sand it first so it has little things to stick to a lot better but it does work 100% for acrylic paints now I use spray paint obviously for it it is great for it and the paint this drywall primer one is a lot cheaper than what I would normally use is a high gloss um, 100% also 100% acrylic and it's a high gloss enamel and I put it on and that leaves a smooth shiny surface much like a poster board it costs a lot more so that's up to you if you prefer to use something like that go for it I think these work out they scratch the same they you know everything about it works the same and if you use high gloss if you use gloss uh, spray paints it's going it's gonna yield the same result in the end so do definitely try that at home uh, and use that type of paint or the other one if you want. Another thing is you can paint this back if you want just to seal it a little bit more to protect it from any weather or anything. Um, but I, I think it's perfectly fine the way it is. It tends to hang on a wall in a house. Um, it doesn't really rain often in a house, um, at least not in my experience. I've never, you know, personally had it rain in the house. Um, but I'm sure it can happen. Um, <laughs> But if you want to seal the back, seal it. It's just a little extra paint, and I save all the paint I can for, you know, only put it where I need it. So, and you don't have to use this hardwood backing to stretch the can. You can stretch the canvas over just the frame if you want, like they do on normal canvases. Um, I do that sometimes. It's really nice, but it's a lot harder to stretch. Um, when you lay this board on top of the fabric, you, you help sh flatten it out, and it's it doesn't leave that bow that you're trying to stretch over. So it holds the fabric up. I mean, it, there's a lot of points that I'm sure you can see, you're, you know, that you know yourself. But, um, I would prefer this board behind it for spray painting. I think it's a lot nicer. Even acrylics, I think it would be nicer. It's just, you know, more support. Um, you don't have to, though, and you don't have to put the cross hatches. Here's one I bought from the store. You don't have to put the cross hatches in it if you're doing it yourself at the store. Just, um, uh, probably in another video I could cover that, but uh, they use like joints here, so that way uh, as it heats up and cools down, you know, it does shrink and expand, shrink and expand, and and you'll get bowing because of that. Now, that's why I don't glue these together up there in the corner on the ones I make. I don't glue the corners woods together um, to leave that there. I only use the staples because the staples allow that little bit of expand and give. Uh, with this board on it, because you glue it to the board, it ain't gonna matter. This board isn't gonna bend. Trust me. Once that's on, it's not going anywhere. It's gonna take a lot to bend it. Uh, if you do your own canvas without a backboard, without the board, then you know 
you're going to find out if you glue these woods together, it's going to bend as it shrinks and whatever. I, I've had that happen on one of my paintings, and I realized don't do that again. Uh, another thing I want to show you is, you know, here's the sizes of, you know, uh, price-wise and stuff. So you can make your own sizes of board, which are amazing, awesome. I love it because when you go to the store, you're not going to necessarily find boards like this one here. The size is 18 by 4 feet. You're not going to necessarily find something like that at your common um, uh, arts and crafts store for canvases. You're definitely not going to find it like Walmart or anything. So it really lends another <coughs> level to your paintings and gives a, you know, a, a little more personalization. So definitely, you know, go and make your own canvases. You'll love that. Uh, plus, when you're wanting to paint something and you just go out and you get this bigger, when you want to do a bigger painting and you're left with something like this here, and you're like, okay, but I just wanted to do this. I just wanted to do this one painting, and it's going to be pretty kind of skinny. And now you got to fill it in with a bunch of junk, and it just you know, you're, you're taking away from the idea you had in your head. Um, sometimes it's nice because you're adding a little more to, from, to your idea and it comes out better than you thought. You know, you, ooh, that's nice, I like that better than my first idea. But a lot of the times, you know, adding that, it, it, you don't want to do that. So make your own canvas boards. Another thing is, here's the size. You can see it's not that much wider, the one from the store. The one from the store is not that much wider than the one we made. Um, it's a lot. Uh, the one we made is a lot taller. Um, so uh, square inches wise, it's pretty close. This one here is twenty dollars. Um, it's normally like twenty five dollars for this one here, and I can't remember the size of this. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, ah, I right, don't do that. Uh, twenty one. So two feet. Bye. Three feet, two feet by three feet, and it was. It's normally twenty-five, and this is twenty bucks. Um, I got it. It was on. It was twenty dollars, and I used a coupon. I got it for ten bucks. So, even with a coupon and getting it for ten dollars, it's still more expensive than the one I made. And the one I made is going to fit perfectly for what I wanted to, to do with it. Um, so why did I get this one? I, I I have no idea really, but I will definitely make something cool with it. Um, kind of had an idea for it and then I threw, threw that idea out the door so I'll make something <clears throat> so go out buy this stuff make your own board if you have any questions uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below I'll help answer them I know the video wasn't perfect I don't have a great camera it's a very very old camera um, it runs on just double A batteries it's a flip video camera the original one it's 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 really crap um, I am working on getting a better camera, looking into a better camera, and when I do, I will make this video again, I'm pretty sure of it, and get you closer views, step by step, even better to uh, each step, you know, even better on each step on how I do each thing, it's like the folding of the corners and stuff, which isn't hard, you've got to figure that out yourself. Um, so I will make that again, but anything I didn't cover in this video, or you couldn't quite tell in this video because of the, you know, the video quality of this video, then please ask down below in the comments. I will do my best to help you figure that out because I want everybody to make their own canvases. It's really nice. If you are, if you think you're bad with tools, trust me, you're not bad with tools. Just at first, unless you've gone and cut your finger off already, then maybe you shouldn't own power tools. Um, but you don't have to use power tools either. You can just use hand saw tools and get it done. You don't need a lot of stuff. If you have stuff sitting in the shed and you're like, I've never used it, now's a great time. If you don't have anything, um, look for sales at the stores. Father Day, Father's Day is uh, coming up. That's a, a great time to get power tools from the store. They tend to be uh, 20, 30% off and stuff. And you don't need big, fancy tools for a question to make it quicker and nicer, but even I don't have fancy tools. so. Keep an eye out. Just stock up on it. Maybe over the year, you know, you get some around Father's Day, Christmas comes around, you see another sale or something, uh, any of those sales, and you go, hey, I'll go pick up a hammer there. I don't have a hammer. I can get this hammer for five dollars off. Cause there you go, you know, and just put it away until you can make your own canvases. But definitely, definitely make your own canvases. It's fun. It is probably more fun than painting it, honestly. Um, some of the times it's more fun to put it together than it is to actually paint something on it. 
and I end up making maybe ten of these with no, no, nothing in mind to paint on them. I just make them because it's fun. Okay, guys, so thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button for me if you haven't already. I'm sure this is a great video enough to help you out with something that you already hit that like button for me. Thank you. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's a pretty decent channel. It's coming along pretty good. I'm real happy with it. And I love every last one of my subscribers, and I'm hoping in the future to do, you know, video, more, better videos, like I said, with better quality, and maybe even some giveaways of uh, paintings or other small little item things that I make and stuff for the fun of it and things like that. You know, I'm hoping I can do those, but they take your support to do those, so please subscribe to the channel, share the video for me. That helps get me noticed. So hang out with me. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and it found it and you found it helpful.